Procrastination is the action of delaying or postponing something. I turned 25 last week and I'm making a conscious effort to just do more. Huh? Coffee increases cognitive enhancement, therefore increasing output. Read to broaden the mind. Who cares that it is shine? Who cares what it does? Since you plan my heart. Execute. The sun. Right, enough of that. Week two. Week number two of the blast is commencing. In terms of my overall caloric intake and macros at the moment, on a training day, we are on 240 grams of protein, 650 grams of carbs, and 60 fat. And on my rest days, same protein intake at 240 grams. We've got 280 grams of carbohydrates and 120 grams of fat. That totals, in terms of a, an overall caloric intake, 4,100 calories on a training day and 3,160 calories on a rest day. That it makes. So Coach Callum has me on meal frequency in terms of certain meals to consume certain carbohydrates. I tend to follow that when I'm working in shortage, when I get up a lot earlier, like five o'clock in the morning. When I'm working from home, my frequency of meals comes down and the volume in each meal increases. So I, I only tend to follow the peri-workout nutrition carbohydrate intake when we are working from home. And I'll just have bigger breakfast, bigger lunches and bigger dinners. Okay, glucose disposal agents, GDAs. Let me just make a, a categorically a clear point here. If you want to control your blood sugar and improve your overall insulin sensitivity, then just don't be a fat bastard. Okay? Having said that, experimenting with these Glycomax GDAs, the Matador ones are, I've heard very good things about as well, and not changing any variables. So when I introduce a new pre-workout, for example, I keep everything the same, my food choices, my food amounts, my timings, just so it's a, a fair representation of the, of the product. Having used this for the past one, two, three, four, five, five or so training sessions and measuring my blood glucose levels, I've seen about a deduction of about 0.3 to 0.5 sometimes. The pump during training, having two of these with a very high carbohydrate meal is ridiculous. And also having these on board, whilst having and consuming a high carbohydrate meal, I don't get as jittery as I used to. Sometimes I have to up the fat a little bit, so I add a little bit more peanut butter into a high carbohydrate meal, just so that spike isn't as high. But having these on board, I can get away with having quite a few carbs home and I'm, and I'm good. In terms of research, quite a lot on chromium, could there be more research possibly? Try them, see how you get on. Other tips to help improve digestion and make yourself feel a little bit better after a heavy carbohydrate meal is not to just chill out, not to relax. I used to have a quite a high carbohydrate meal, go and have a nap, and I used to be wake up so sluggish. And when I've had a quite a large meal, especially around dinner time, I'll go and walk around the block. So popular to contrary belief walking around and moving helps aid digestion. So once I've finished that meal, my pre-workout, it's not really active, is it? But I'm moving about making my intra-workout, which is EAAs at 20 grams. My intra-workout carbohydrate has been up to 75 grams, so we're using cyclic dextrin for that. And I've got my glycine, or citrulline and creatine. It is a quad day with quite a lot of taxing movement, so I'm gonna go for MV Pre, not Mega Pre Black. I did an Instagram post about these two, about how that is still my number one favorite. But this is in the category of the fuck you up pre-workouts, where they're hit and miss. Kraken and MV Pre. Sometimes, very rarely with MV Pre, more often than so with, with Kraken. I'll take it and it won't, it, my heart rate, jittery. They're in the fuck you up pre-workout category. Mega Pre is like a sensible, politically correct pre-workout. Is that? Okay. I don't know if anyone's ever referred to as a pre-workout as politically correct, but I'm trying to convey the point of it being sensible and not offending anyone. If you want a pure, unadulterated 
focus infused session, just re un unparalleled tunnel like focus. Utopia, and can you hear that little bird? Utopian MV Pre. It might not be the bird, it might actually be the pre workout. But these two combined is ridiculous. There's Hooperzine, Hooperzine A and MV Pre alongside the Cognizant and Mucuna Prurians seed extract in the Utopia. Honestly, one hell of a stack. I was going to film and drive, but the continual flickering of the light would have pissed you lot off. I'll be very brief. I wanted to talk about a topic that we discussed on holiday when I was in Rhodes, and that was not necessarily my aversion to running testosterone high, just to the reasons why I like to, to drop my testosterone dosage on a blast during off-season and contest prep, and let the NPP, let the trend, let the DECA, let the, let, let the EQ do the work. And it's a very simple explanation is that less testosterone in the system, less chance of aromatization to occur, less chance of estrogen-related side effects. But Tom, surely that only really applies to contest prep when water retention is a big no-no. I can see, yes, I agree completely. And you could use the additional estrogen on an off-season. Let's not forget that estrogen has many benefits. It's not, it, it, estrogen gets the same sort of rap as insulin did back in the day when everyone said, you can't spike your insulin because you'll get fat. Estrogen has its importance for the promotion and production of growth hormone, for glucose utilization, for the potential to increase the concentration of androgen receptors in certain tissues, but at the same time, probably more personal preference, I just like to keep my estrogen at bay by running my testosterone relatively low and letting my non-aromatizing compounds do the work. That's relatively, that's my stance on the situation. And I think a few people agree. And also, when you're in an off-season, for example, you don't want the, the continual or the build-up of stress and toxicity within your body anyway from the actual compounds. You don't want to have to then be chucking more and more and more aromatized inhibitors in, in the mix. You don't want that. Time for quads and delts. Okay, post-cycle therapy, have we been doing it wrong? Not really. This isn't some groundbreaking research and everyone's starting to melt down and start losing the plot. <laughs> I'm gonna go and train. I'm outside Muscle Works Ovens, by the way. I've heard it's got great machinery, but the atmosphere is shit. We'll see. Not bad, not bad, Jim. This le this upstairs is very good for legs. I think I might come back next week and train legs. Although I'm training with Callum on Tuesday at legs at Crayford, but the that this I'll show you this this hack squat. Is that what they call a jugular vein? Yeah, one in my neck, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's the vein that the lady says in the blood tests, yeah, we don't need to put the thing on. I'm gonna leave it there. Tomorrow we're training with Callum. Oh, I'm not gonna say that he's joining me because Crayford's not my gym and I don't know why we're, we're training legs at Crayford, fellas. The duo, muscle mentors are both gonna be training legs to Luke and Callum. We should be doing it at King's really. Maybe it's easier in terms of accessibility. But we should go down to King's boys. I'm gonna have plenty of carbs tonight. Hmm. 
I don't really feel great on camera tonight. No, it's not flowing, is it? No, it's ebbing and flowing. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Week three of the blast has begun. It's very much in my system. I also really like tea bowl. First time I'm, I'm, I've tried chewing a bowl. I like it. Take it three hours before training. Peaks just in time for concentration of blood plasma levels and it's great. It's really nice, hard agent, good pump. Tomorrow we have got legs. Thank you and that much love. Who cares that it makes plants grow? Who cares what it does? Since you broke my heart.